A man that had a tremendous influence in my life as a young preacher was Brother Ben Sutton. Ben Sutton was an Englishman, uh, spent some time in Wales serving the Lord and in other countries, and eventually came to Canada, spent his later years out in Manitoba, where the Lord took him home, I think in 2007. But Brother Ben was a remarkable character. He had been raised in a very difficult environment. His father was a drunkard. His mother had been killed when he was nine years old, and he sorely missed her. She was the only bright spot in his rather bleak life. He had four older brothers who all were given to drink like his father and one sister, I think. And he went to work in the coal mines when he was just 14 years old and so had very little formal education. But he was one of the most eloquent men I knew. He was eloquent in the scriptures. The Bible was his textbook, and he had learned how to communicate the truth of God in such an effective way. He was one of the most eloquent preachers I ever heard, and I loved to listen to him preach. Well, Brother Ben, as I said, uh, had grown up in a very tough environment, many a time come down the stairs to find his father lying on the floor, surrounded by beer bottles, where he had been lying all night. And uh, sadly, Ben got involved in the same. He left home as a young man, was very unhappy with his stepmother, and uh, ended up uh, going to sea. And during the war, he was in the Navy, saw a lot of mayhem and death and destruction, and um, grew no better, became a very heavy drinker during the war. And then uh, after the war, he met this beautiful young lady that became his wife, and he thought, a fresh start, I'll get a little home and a family, and I'll settle down. But, but drink had him by the throat. And he also began to gamble, and um, really his life was one of terrible debauchery. He wrote, sometimes my little home would be the scene of violent outbursts. The table would be upended, the window shattered, the dishes broken as I broke the bounds of common sanity while the demon of drink raged within me. My little daughter would fly into hiding and my dear wife break her heart as Satan had his way in my life. Often my brother and I would go out to get drunk together and frequently we would finish up in a drunken brawl. And so his life continued until one Saturday he left about 10.30 in the morning, told his wife, I'm going out, I, I won't tell you when I'll be back. And uh, he went to a pub called um, the Winter Gardens in South Shields and began to drink about 11 o'clock in the morning and continued on drinking into the afternoon. And then he describes what happened. He said, uh, over my right, a man... On my right, a man was trying to play jazz on the piano. Behind me, a couple of drunks were singing out, out of tune and out of time. In front of me, the barmaids lolled about the counter. Then I looked up at the clock. I noticed that it was an advertisement for Guinness beer. Now and again, around the clock would appear the words, Guinness time. I began to think about time. When did it start? When would it end? Then suddenly, like a bolt from the blue, one word thundered into my mind. Eternity. It's remarkable, isn't it? God will find a way to speak to someone sitting half drunk in a pub, using an advertisement for a beer. God will use anything to get to people's hearts. And he said, it was just like God used that to open up, to expose the evil of his heart, and he became afraid to die. He wandered the streets of South Shields till late at night, afraid to cross the street for fear he'd be hit by a car and ushered into eternity. And finally, as he, as he tramped about with no hope, he recalled that his brother-in-law and sister, sometime before, had told him they wouldn't be going out drinking with him anymore because they'd been saved. He thought they were lunatics, and he 
cut them off and hadn't seen them in all that time. But then he realized maybe that's what he needed. He needed to get saved. And so at 11 o'clock at night, he showed up at his brother-in-law's door and his brother-in-law thought, oh boy, here comes trouble. But he said, no, can you tell me about Jesus? And the brother-in-law till 2.30 in the morning did the best he could to explain the gospel to Ben. But Ben couldn't get it. And so his brother-in-law said, listen, tomorrow, Sunday evening, there's a preacher coming to town and he will preach the gospel. You'll understand it. And Jesus will change your life. And so that evening, Ben said to his brother-in-law, will you come with me in the taxi to my house to tell my wife where I've been because she won't believe me? And sure enough, his brother-in-law went with him across town and said to his wife, Ben has been talking with me about Jesus. Well, she didn't know what that meant. But sure enough, the next night, he got dressed up, headed out to the meeting. She wondered where he was going, and he said, I'm going to the gospel meeting. And that night he heard words whereby he might be saved and simply put his trust in the Lord Jesus. Came home and told his wife, I'm saved. And she said, well, I'll be watching you. And sure enough, she did. But within a short time, she too went out. He stayed home with his little daughter and uh, could hardly wait until he heard the knock at the door. And when he opened the door, he said, no one had to tell me. I could see the look in her face as she said to me, I've been saved too. And God gloriously transformed this couple. He became a great evangelist, street preacher, spent time going into the mines, preaching the gospel to the miners. And eventually, as I say, uh, came to Canada and was well known across Canada, preaching the word of God and proclaiming the gospel. And it just reminds us, you know, that God is not bound. He is not limited to a particular way of the gospel. He can use anything. If all you do is go to the theater, he'll use a movie to speak to you. If all you do is go to the pub, he'll find a way to use a beer commercial to get to your heart. God isn't fussy about the way he reaches sinners. We should be praying about this for our unsaved loved ones, people that we think are so far from God, and yet God is not far from every one of them. So be encouraged, pray on, and realize that God has endless ways to reach a soul, and we should be sensitive to this and ready to step in and encourage people to hear the gospel when they're sensitive, when they're when their hearts are pricked, when their consciences are convicted, to be ready to speak a word in season to those who are weary.